so your ambience needs to feel natural. A background loop might be good for defining the feel of an area, but over the top of that bed you need lots of variety and randomness. To recreate the variety and randomness that we've learned to expect in the real world. Many games are also about developing skill through repeated actions, so the sounds for these actions need to have variety to avoid annoying the player. The implication for solving both of these problems is that we'd need to import and use thousands and thousands of sounds. But all platforms have a limit as to how many sounds we can hold in memory, and on some platforms that's pretty small. In order to get around this, we need to take what's called a procedural approach to sound design. We need to create systems that recombine and vary the sounds we have in new ways. We should note here a distinction between procedural sound design, which usually refers to sound systems using pre-existing WAV files, and procedural audio, which is a term usually reserved for when you're developing systems that synthesize the audio itself. If we use bookmark 3 to take us back to the meadow, you might remember we had different length loops playing against each other which creates a new sound every time they fall in and out of sync with each other. We then took that a bit further by taking the same file and pitch shifting it and having it play against itself to create a bit more variety. The second thing we've done is to create one-shot sound cues that change the order of events through random choice and timing. Let's have a look again at a quick example. So here we've got some recordings of some pigeons, and I wanted that sound in the centre of the village. So I could just take that, create a loop, pull that into the engine and have that looping all the time in the background. But of course it's going to be repetitive. So what we do instead... we extract the individual components of the sound and then in Unreal Engine we have a looping system that puts a random delay between each sound and perhaps modulates the volume of the sounds and then we get this. And you can hear that in context in the demonstration level village area. We can think of both these approaches, asynchronous loops and random choice with delays, as being sequenced approaches to procedural sound design, in that we're varying the sequence in which sounds happen in order to create variations in the final sound. We'll have a look at a few more sequenced approaches to procedural sound design for you to try out. The random choice of sounds with a looping delay is really useful and we've used it all over the demonstration level. However, random is random. It produces a random texture, which after a while becomes a predictable pattern in itself. Predictably unpredictable, if you like. There are other tools where we can vary the sequence of sounds in order to create some more naturally occurring patterns. Another creature that we want in our magic forest is an owl, or rather owls. When we think of an owl sound, what we're actually thinking of is two tawny owls in a call and response. So here's the original recordings. So what we could do is we could edit out these two twit twoo, twit twoo, and I'd probably get about seven from this recording, import them into the game, and every now and then play that sound. Or we could further edit them down into separate components. In other words, the twit and the twoo. So if we look over here, we've got seven twits and seven twoos. By bringing them in to Unreal Engine and creating a system, we can now have this twit with that twoo, which was the original sound, or we could have this twit with that twoo. So now you can see we're gonna get 49 new combinations of sounds out of this without actually increasing the memory needed to hold the sound data. So here's our sound cue. We've got a random choice of the twit sounds, a random choice of the twoo, and here, we've got a concatenator. This will chain together sounds. So we have twit and a slight delay before the twoo, 
And then this whole system is part of a looping delay. So instead of having sounds dotted around randomly, we've now grouped them into little sound events. We can see another example here where this bird, the blue tit, has been broken up into paired events. So sometimes we'll get this, sometimes we'll get this. So the initial part is the same for both of those, but then the tail, the second part of the sound, changes every time. And again, this happens every now and again. There's several examples of this in the demonstration level. We'll just look at a couple more. Down by the lake, we have this boat here. There might be a wave from the lake that makes this boat rock on the shore. So we've broken that into its separate elements. We've got the lake lapping, then the boat knocks. Then the concatenator has another input. This modulator here is going to play another instance of the knocking sound, but this time much quieter. So every now and again, looping delay system, we get this group of three sounds. And of course, because we've got modulators, we're also getting varying volumes. In those two examples, we've been stitching together different groups of sounds, but if they're from the same random set, then you can just use the looping node, but set it to loop a specific number of times. We have a look at the crickets back in the meadow area. Here we've got some cricket chirps, and sometimes we will hear a set of three, and sometimes we will hear a set of two. So in the meadow, it sounds a bit like this. And we've got two instances of that sound in two ambient sound actors. And back in the main village itself, we have this blacksmith's workshop here at the edge of the village, and we've done a similar thing. This is the blacksmith hitting his anvil, sometimes three, sometimes four times, sometimes seven. And then every now and again, the blacksmith might drop something on the floor. So we get this alternate sound. We'll hear that in the village. Sequencing your sound waves in different orders with variable timings can help create variety in your audio. You should also think about when it's appropriate to create patterns by grouping sound events together, since a completely random texture can become predictably unpredictable. Animals, including humans, often create small clusters of activity with larger gaps in between. Using the looping node or the concatenator node can allow you to create systems that replicate this.